Good evening. Well, I think some of the most dramatic scenes in the House of Commons, certainly in living memory, um, and maybe some of the most dramatic for a couple of centuries, because today was supposed to be the day that we had the SNP motion, and this was a motion about Gaza. By the way, nothing that's happened today has anything to do with the United Kingdom. Nothing to do with the cost of living. Nothing to do with open door immigration. Nothing to do with the National Health Service. This is all about Gaza. That is what is now dominating British politics. It is, of course, a direct result of the increasing sectarianism in British politics, and in particular within the Labour Party because Keir Starmer has tried from the start, ever since the 7th of October, to take a relatively nuanced position. On the one hand, that Israel has the right to defend itself, but on the other, that we don't want to see excess casualties in Gaza. But that line has become harder and harder for him to take, as many in the Labour movement, particularly those on the Muslim side of politics, are speaking out about the way Israel is behaving and calling it a genocide, which of course, in any historical sense, is a complete and utter outrage. That is the genesis of all of this. And what happened was the SNP had a motion down to be voted on in the House of Commons. Now bear in mind, this is not legislative, it's not executive, it doesn't change anything, least of all here, and certainly not in Gaza itself. But it's a statement of intent of where British political parties sit. Now, I'm sure there are many of you out there saying, do you know what, this is not our priority. Well, no, that may well be right, but it's been the priority of Parliament and almost the obsession of the Labour Party for the last few months. What the SNP were asking for was an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and in Israel. They condemned any military assault, namely what may be about to happen in Rafah. And most controversially, they want an end to the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. It's a motion, effectively, saying that Israel should give up, that Israel should surrender, that there should be no attempt to go after Hamas, who not only committed those atrocities on the 7th of October, but have promised to repeat them. Now, that was what was supposed to be debated and voted on today with a government amendment against it. But what's the Lindsay Hoyle? the Speaker did this morning was he allowed a Labour amendment to an SNP motion. OK, I'm trying not to lose you. But it, in effect, the Labour Party amendment was really a peace offering to their own backbenchers, an attempt not to split the party. The last time there was a vote on whether there should be an immediate ceasefire, 56 Labour MPs, including eight front benchers, went against Sir Keir Starmer. So, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, who is neutral as the Speaker, but remember, remember, has been, was elected to begin with as a Labour MP, has made what is being seen by many as a highly partisan political gesture, which incidentally, we're told, breaks Article 31 of the Standing Orders of the House of Commons, and he does it much to the favour of the Labour Party. And that has caused anger, that has caused outrage. So much so that William Ragg, a Conservative backbench member of Parliament, has even put down a motion saying the Speaker should be replaced. And extraordinarily, whilst much of this debate was going on, Sir Lindsay Hoyle was literally nowhere to be seen. And the most dramatic moment that came, and we can see this footage on our screens right now, was when SNP and Conservative members of Parliament literally walked out of the House of Commons, leaving the whole thing in a state of complete and utter chaos. Then there came a Labour motion for the debate to continue, but to do so in private. And that would mean not just the public galleries being cleared, but radio and television transmissions would have to have stopped as well. This did happen back in 2001 when terrorism was being discussed and as a matter of national security it was felt that MPs should be able to debate very sensitive matters in private. But the idea that Labour even put this motion forward, why should this be debated in private? This is not a matter of national security. This is about what's happening in Israel and Gaza. This is the extent to which 
religious sectarianism is now dominating British politics and the House of Commons. It is regrettable, to say the very least. Well, Sir Lindsay Hoyle has reappeared uh, to a very, very stormy House of Commons. Accusations being made that he met with Sue Gray, the real boss of the Labour Party these days, and uh, he, he denied that very, very strongly in the House of Commons. But there's also talk that the Labour Party said, said to Sir Lindsay Hoyle, you know what, you know what, unless you keep, uh, unless you keep our motion there, uh, we, are, and, uh, yeah, we certainly won't uh, be allowing you to be the speaker if we win the next election. Some of the truth of this, we probably will never ever know. But it is an extraordinary decision that Hoyle made. In fact, it takes us back to the days of John Burko. In fact, some sarcastically were shouting out, bring back Burko, when Burko was seen to make very, very controversial decisions in terms of what votes he allowed, what amendments he allowed during the whole Brexit debacle, which went on pretty much for two years. However dramatic, however passionate the scenes were in Westminster during Brexit, they are frankly, as of nothing, compared to what we have seen today. That is my take on it. I'm very pleased to say that I'm joined now live from Westminster by Christopher Hope, GB News's political editor. Christopher, good evening. Welcome to the program. Uh, this has been moving so quickly. I'd love to know what is the current state of play. Well, the current state of play is MPs are wandering around the members' lobby very near to where I'm standing in the House of Parliament now, Nigel, not knowing what to do. You heard that extraordinary statement there on the news bulletin with Polly uh, saying there that, uh, that the, the, the speaker is essentially apologising. This is not where the position he'd wanted to happen. Almost, to my mind, begging for his job. I mean, I've been talking to MPs. Yeah. They think his position yeah. is getting untenable over this route. Now, what that means is, uh, is un you don't normally have um, speakers ever having their, their jobs questioned. questioned. Um, why it's happening now, viewers might wonder why on earth this, this has fallen apart in the House of Commons tonight. This is an election year, Nigel. The SNP want to raise the issue of an immediate ceasefire. That is an, uh, their honest opinion. The government won't go as far as that. Some Labour MPs want to go to the SNP's position, but they feel they can't. And that's what's happening in, an, in a, a year of, of an election. And that's why the SNP are pushing it. It ha has caused division. They knew that the wording of their motion meant that some Labour MPs would have to support it and then probably resign front bench roles. So Labour stepped up with its amendment. Normally that couldn't be selected because you can't amend an opposition amendment. But the Speaker allowed it to go ahead. Essentially, in a game of football, the referee has changed the rules moments before the game starts. And, it, mm. uh, and mm. so that mm. change favours one team, not the other. And therefore, the other teams have walked out, walked out of common, House of Commons. It's very, very difficult. He's meeting tomorrow morning with the leaders of all the main parties, plus their chief whips. This is the biggest crisis. Uh, uh, point of order, Sarah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Chris. This point of order and hearing what what happens next? Do we get a vote on I this tonight be or don't alone we? In this place today, in being. We, I think we don't get a vote on it tonight. They've, they've voted on trying to hold a, um, a session in, in, in private. This goes ahead. The SNP may be granted their opposition day debate again. We may go through all, all this again in a few weeks' time. But as things stand, there's no vote tonight. But I, I think what people outside the campaign, the Palestinian protesters outside, make of it, I don't know. It is not edifying for Parliament for this to happen. You're right. But equally, we are in an election year and politics is at play. Two quick points, Chris, before I let you go. The first, in your long, long career covering what goes on in Parliament, have you ever seen <laughs> anything like it? And the, second part, and the second part of the question is, do you think our viewers have a right to say, what the hell is going on? What does this have to do with me, my life, my standard of living? Do you think the public will just look at this as Westminster Games? On the last point, yes, it is Westminster Games. Um, I, I have never seen, I've seen some MPs walk out during the budget. The SNP, Alex Salmon, Nigel, used to lead his MPs out during the budget as a show of, uh, of uh, 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 upset about the way the UK government was spending Scotland's money, Scotland's oil money. I have never seen 
two political parties, two of the three main parties leave the chamber, yeah. and that is all on the Speaker. If the Speaker of the House of Commons had not changed the rules today, gone against precedent, uh, he, to his defence, by the way, I should say, Nigel, he did it because he felt that all MPs wanted to vote for something. He felt that MPs are being threatened in their local seats and therefore give them a, 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 an opt-out, and that was what the Labour option was. He wasn't trying to be part of political, his friends say, but let me tell you, there is fury about his role and his position. It is an edifying, um, I'm afraid this is politics, in an election year. Yeah, unedifying, but somehow different, uh, Chris Hope, thank you. And different folks, I think, because, and I've been using this word, I think before anybody, uh, sectarianism, religious sectarianism. That is what we are seeing in British politics. I believe that, and it's a word I think you'll hear a lot more of, sadly, over the course of the next few years.